Hey guys, today we're going to be going over all of the new information we learned in Bungie's first stream reveal of the House of Wolves. On Wednesday, Bungie revealed new information about the reef and upgrading gear from the past, so let's get into it. Right now, we are in the Queen's Bay. This is a new social space in Destiny coming with the House of Wolves. You'll see a lot of it as we progress through the video. This is not replacing the tower, the tower is still very much a thing. The fallen House of Wolves has rebelled against the Queen, which is why you are here. So the first big thing revealed was the Queen's Wrath faction. Petra will be your representative with regards to any Queen's Wrath bounties and quests. We have a selection of bounties here which vary from killing named enemies to killing more general enemies in various locations where you would find fallen. Perhaps we'll see more enemies or new locations to find these foes, but nothing has been revealed on that front just yet. Given that killing named enemies gives a very large amount of reputation, it wouldn't surprise me if these were not available every day, but that is total speculation. Petra will also sell emblems, shaders, and a ship, kinda acting similar to how Eris acted as an NPC for the Dark Below. There will be full sets of armor and weapons to obtain in the Prison of Elders, in which that gear will drop directly in the Prison of Elders, but can also be obtained from a vendor who we'll look at soon. Petra will be the main story agent of the House of Wolves. She'll lead you through the quest chain and the story of the House of Wolves. It will supposedly be a much fresher experience in the game and is a reaction to what players liked within Destiny. Whether that means she'll just sit there and give you the next step in the quest, if there will actually be some cutscenes, or anything in between is still to be determined. The next representative or NPC vendor we'll look at revolves around the Prison of Elders, who is a part of the House of Judgment, one of the Fallen Houses. This particular house does not have many members, with Varix the Loyal, aka this guy, being one of the only known remaining members of the house. He has remained loyal to the Queen and is an informant to her. He also runs the Prison of Elders. The currency used with the House of Judgment are Fallen Cores and Judgment Tokens. Fallen cores are obtained through arena challenges, and judgment tokens are earned by opening chests in the arena, killing wanted fallen, and they will increase your reputation with the House of Judgment. We don't know just yet how many cores you'll be able to earn per week, but the Prison of Elders acts like any other weekly reset, once per week per character, per difficulty if there ends up being multiple difficulties. We can see that he offers some class items, weapons, armor, shaders, and ships. The armor piece is purchased with an armor core, the weapon with a weapon core. You can also turn in both a weapon and armor core to get what appears to be a random reward. The ships and shaders are representative of the various fallen houses, the House of Devils, the House of Winter, etc. The ships are bought with a token of flight, and the shaders are bought with a token of identity. How these tokens are earned have yet to be revealed. His inventory will rotate weekly with regards to the armor and weapons. His inventory should be a pattern, or rather, you should not see the same armor or weapon come up three or four weeks in a row. Let's take a look at the weapon that's available, an auto rifle. Now right off the bat you'll see that it's 365 attack at base, and the attack upgrades are gone. We'll get more into weapon upgrades later. The weapon comes with bonus damage to shanks and with crowd control. It's also a low rate of fire, high damage auto rifle, and also comes with scope options and the bonuses flared magwell, field scout, and perfect balance. The weapon kind of looks like one of those shotguns that the fallen captains own with that four barrel front, but you know, obviously it's not a shotgun. If auto rifles get buffed, then this is going to be a fantastic PvE weapon, especially for the Prison of Elders, assuming there's going to be shanks in there. I would also like to note that there's no elemental damage on this weapon despite it being a weapon that you get from endgame content. I'm not sure what the deal will be with getting new elemental primaries, if they're still in the game or what. A quick look at the armor shows that it comes with 42 light at base, and all of the armor upgrades have been removed. If you remember from a while back, Luke Smith mentioned on NeoGAF that they wanted players to be able to get an armor upgrade and be able to equip it immediately and feel an effect of that upgrade. Well, it seems like the effect they were looking for was light level. It appears that endgame armor will come with 42 light at base and will not have to be upgraded to get that additional light. Normally you would have to upgrade your armor to get to that max light level. You'll still need to level the gear if you want the other bonuses, but light comes maxed out on the gear the second you earn it, and this is not limited to endgame gear. Prison of Elders will not be immediately unlocked. You will need to do the story and the quests first before you're able to play it. 
It is a raid level difficulty activity, which will have variety, which will change from week to week. It's not going to be the exact same every time. It's not going to be stagnant. How much variety and how different it will end up being week to week is still to be determined. Be sure to tune in to the Prison of Elders reveal on May 7th to learn more about it. We get a very brief preview of the Trials of Osiris next. The vendor for the Trials of Osiris is here in the Queen's Bay and we get some tooltip information on a couple of items. First, Stone Tier Rewards, where you earn the right to the Stone Tier of the Trials of Osiris prizes, which requires two wins on a single Trials Passage. We can see that there's an option to buy something under the Trials Passage area, but what that thing is, is never revealed. The Trials Supplies category holds the Favor of Osiris, Mercy of Osiris, and Boon of Osiris. Favor starts you with a win in the Trials, Mercy forgives your first loss, and Boon will grant you two wins if you win your first match. These all cost three Passage Coins, but how these coins are earned is unknown. So this sort of sounds like a tournament style event, where as you win more and more, you gain access to better prizes, but if you lose too much, you might get knocked out of the tournament. We learned that the Trials of Osiris will be a permanent thing in the game, but only available on the weekends until the reset. So from Friday until the Tuesday reset, the Trials will be open, and then from Tuesday until the next Friday, the Trials will be closed. So open for four days and closed for three. I imagine there will be some overlap with Iron Banner and Trials of Osiris. My understanding is that if there is an Iron Banner event, that the Trials will still be available to play. Tune in next Wednesday, the 29th, where Triple Rec will be the special guest on the next Bungie reveal, which will feature the Trials of Osiris. Beyond all of that, the Reef will have a Bounty Bot, another Crypt Arc, Vaults, and a Postmaster, stuff that you'd find in the Tower. There are also, quote, areas for expansion in the Queen's Bay, so there may be some things in the future that are added to the Queen's Bay, any events, stuff like that. Xur was also mentioned, and it's still a little ambiguous, but it sounds like he might be able to spawn in either the Tower or the Queen's Bay at any time that he would normally show up. But don't worry, if you do not purchase the House of Wolves expansion, you'll still be able to access the Queen's Bay because it is available to everyone regardless of expansion status. Speaking of the Tower, many people might be wondering if there's any reason to go back to the Tower, and the answer is a definite yes, so let's move there and head to the Speaker. The Speaker now has the ability to exchange your materials for other stuff. You can turn Ascendant Shards into Energy, Energy into Shards, Radiant Shards into Energy, Energy into Shards. You can buy a Mode of Light for two Shards of either type, and you can turn in one Ascendant or Radiant Shard for 250 Glimmer. So all of those shards and energy that you've been hoarding can be used to sell for cash or exchange for other stuff. It also gives a little bit of an incentive to run the older content, especially considering what's coming up next with armor and weapon upgrading, but we'll hold off on that for just a minute. Moving to the new Monarchy vendor, we can see it's been improved quite a bit. First of all, the vendors are selling a couple more weapons than they used to, and even the thumbnails of those weapons and armor look way better. As Deej goes down the list, we see a lot of new weapon bonuses as well. Stuff like, kills with this weapon grant a brief boost to the sprint's top speed on the auto rifle. This weapon gains better target acquisition. Rapidly landing precision hits will return one round to the magazine. I know that one isn't super new, but it was only available on Crota weapons previously. Both of those being on the hand cannon. And melee kills while this weapon is equipped have a chance to refill the magazine is on the shotgun. It's still unknown where else these bonuses might be able to be applied, if it's possible. Another nice change is that the weapon models aren't just a recoloring of the base model of the weapon with some faction paint on it. A bunch of weapon models are now brand new, which I absolutely love. I hated how bland some of the weapons looked and how samey a lot of the weapons looked, but everything just looks sharper and much better overall. You'll notice that the armor that's available for purchase has 36 light on it, like the Crota gear. So those of you who managed to get a full raid set of gear are not going to need to go out and buy new vendor gear. The vendor gear will only get you level 32, which is much better than last time. It does not appear that you'll be able to buy level 33 on the first day of the expansion, which is good. Moving over to Lord Shax, Deej equips a set of Warlock PvP armor, and this looks very, very impressive, very gladiatorial, great colors, it's super sharp looking, very, very cool looking armor. 
Once again, even the thumbnails of the gear look much better than before. Sharper, more detail, looks great. The other set that he equips also looks really, really good. We have a couple more new weapon bonuses as they go over to the Crucible Quartermaster. Unassisted kills with this weapon reduce grenade and melee cooldown, and readying this weapon grants a brief period of bonus accuracy. Now, let's get to the part that you've all been waiting for, weapon and armor upgrades. You've got your Destiny Classic weapons, you've got your Dark Below weapons, and you love them and you want to cherish them, but you can't upgrade their attack values. Until now. Using the new material Etheric Light, which drops in the Prison of Elders, Trials of Osiris, the Nightfall, and Iron Banner, plus some Glimmer and other materials, you will now be able to upgrade your old legendary weapons from year one. So even if you don't own the expansion, you can still upgrade. My understanding is that year one will last until the big Comet expansion comes around, and my understanding is also that this is how we will upgrade our weapons in year two and year three, unless they decide to change anything, etc. Once we hit year two, my guess is that we'll have to retire those old weapons for new ones. So for now, you get to hold on to those old weapons for a little while longer. Note that the weapon needs to be fully upgraded first before you can upgrade it to the max level. You can't just have old weapons sitting around with no experience and expect to level them right away. You need to level them once, but that's it after that. There is no cap on how much etheric light you can earn in a week, but obviously the amount of activities that you can do in a week that grant etheric light are limited to the weekly reset. Shadow Price, done, 365. Vex Mythoclast, 365. Fatebringer, 365. Exotic weapons will require an exotic shard to upgrade to 365 versus legendary weapons which need the etheric light. Exotic weapons also require weapon parts, whereas legendary weapons require planetary materials. Xur will still sell exotic shards, but he will no longer sell the upgrades. Now you may have noticed an icon above the Ascend icon, and this icon only shows up on House of Wolves weapons called Reforge Ready. That's right, starting with the House of Wolves, and only with House of Wolves weapons, you will be able to reforge those weapons at the gunsmith for one mode of light, three weapon parts, and 250 glimmer. It will reset any progression via experience and ascension, so make sure you roll those bonuses exactly how you want them before leveling up the weapon. The gunsmith also sells weapon telemetries, although their price was not revealed. Some extra stuff that was thrown in during the stream, there will not be an increase in the Glimmer Cap, you're probably not going to even need it now with all the stuff that you can buy. There's no new Ghost Shells at this time, and player trading has been discussed, but there's still plenty of discussion going on and there are no plans to implement trading at this time. Also, nothing on third subclasses at this time. Finally, some stuff that was not revealed during the stream can be found on the official Destiny website. We have some screenshots of some other armor and some action shots of the game in general. Here we have the Ram Warlock Helm, the Hunter's Trials of Osiris chest armor, or at least that's what it looks like. My guess for these Titan Gloves would be ACD Zero Feedback Fence. We have a Fallen Captain looking shotgun and the Prison of Elders heavy machine gun. Some action shots reveal some places we'll be going to, but I want to draw attention to this picture in particular. The following is all speculation. Look at the weapon being held. This is a very particular looking rocket launcher, if it is a rocket launcher. The Titan has a rocket launcher already on their back. And if we go to this clip, we see Deej stop short of the last item in the new Monarchy item list. Could this be something new? Only time will tell. That is everything from this week's reveal, and damn, that was a lot. As for my thoughts, this is already better than The Dark Below, by far. There's way more stuff being added to the game. Trials, new storyline, new activities, streamlined upgrading, you can use stuff from the past, new weapon models. I don't think there was anything here that I didn't like. Even the weapon thumbnails look sharp as hell, going just down to the smallest detail. It really is looking impressive from what we've seen so far, and I'm really, really looking forward to getting my hands on the expansion soon. Even the Twitch chat was getting excited and was saying very positive things, and when Bungie's Twitch chat is happy, they, they gotta be doing something right. It was watched by over 100,000 people, peaking around 140,000 people. Absolutely insane. Bungie is learning. And this game is only going to get better, and I think House of Wolves is clear evidence of that. This makes me 
very, 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 very excited for the future of the game, and I cannot wait to play it. In fact, since I'm up in Seattle right now, I think I'm going to go do that. I'm going to go play some House of Wolves right now. So, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time. Yeah. Well, and I remember, you know, the time I, I have pined for a Thunderlord for mm -hmm. a long time. Uh, I used this gun on stage in front of people for a week at Gamescom. Okay. And I thought, this gun is so awesome. Uh, this is fully upgraded at home on this test build. It is not. I'm going to be able to upgrade this thing to 365. I'm going to keep it with me. I acquired my Thunderlord after a Crucible match. I was playing a game with Datto and Leopard Stealth. Did you have a high score? And uh, I did not have the high score, but, but I, held my, I held my own. Okay. I held my own. Did I was you, there. Positive I fought. I had maybe a 0.83 KD, okay, which that's, is good that's for that's me. Not that's not 0.82, so you're... It's, <laughs> it's, yeah, yeah. it's 0 0.01 better than... Yeah, exactly. So but I, I got my Thunderlord. Point. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, and I can always, you know, if somebody says, how'd you get that? I'm like, ask Datto. We were in the Crucible. Mm -hmm. I won it. I was very happy. Uh, but if that story ended up being, Datto gave it to me, then yeah, that's, yeah. it's less interesting for me.